my god, oh my god, oh my god. We just got done doing the finale of Season 2, The Mandalorian. And I've got to tell you guys, you want to buckle up for these spoilers. If you don't want to be spoiled, I don't know why you clicked on the video, but turn away now. Here's your opportunity to. I'm always the first one to bring y'all out this breaking news. So hopefully y'all subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Select the all feature and smash that thumbs up like button. All right, we're going to start out with the biggest spoiler of them all. Luke Skywalker actually appears in this one and kicks all the dark troopers butts man the mandalorian only gets to get one and he can barely do it and lou skywalker just mops the floor with them all and almost effortlessly and it was so cool to see him do this kind of force crush move like off a star killer video game uh technique thing like it was so cool to be able to see him do that now uh, l not exactly a dark side ability since he did do it on droids but, you know, it is still veering away from the light, indicating more of the great Jedi path, because we all know that he knows that the Jedi failed and everything. But yeah, we all know that. So. All right. Now, I'm going to say something, guys, that y'all might not like to hear. All I ask is that you at least have a calm, reasonable discussion with me in the comments and not press the dislike button and try to downvote me to hell over this. Okay, guys, I'm going to explain the reasons. So just bear with me. I really did not like this episode. This episode was pretty stinky. It not only was it incredibly cliche and easy to read and predict. Basically, they uh, have Moff Gideon's target. You know, they have his coordinates and they make a basically diversion. This kind of trick thing where they pretend that they have an Imperial ship and they pretend that Bumba Fett's attacking them. And they're able to land, even though the Moff Gideon isn't falling for it at all. They're still able to land, and Moff Gideon, you know, and uh, they actually, re sorry, I got backtrack. They actually recruit uh, the Mandalorians that they had met in the Fish World in order to be able to help, in order to be able to help retrieve Grogu, Baby Yoda, and their only condition is that they want Moff Gideon, and so she can get the dark saber, so that she can rule Mandalore, and. I'll say something good about the episode. There's a little bit of a scuffle between uh, the, I don't remember what her name was, but the black girl, Mandalorian, the New Age one, and Boba Fett. And it's actually a pretty decent fight. And they uh, end up kind of doing like a Kamehameha wave, you know, meeting as a beam struggle, except they end up doing with the flamethrowers. It was pretty cool. And Jean Carano gets, you know, oh my God, she's so hot. But uh, she does her normal kicking butt and everything, but... The suspense of the believability, like, was a little bit too much to bear within this episode because they weren't getting hit at all. Even though they were in tunnels, they had tunnel vision right there, and the, so did the stormtroopers. Like, and they still weren't just getting hit at all. Like, it just wasn't that good. In fact, at one point, or her weapon just happens to get jammed, which has never happened in Star Wars history before and presents a whole bunch of continuity problems. But, you know, and including blasters running out, but that just gives her an excuse to go and kick butt, which I love seeing. Like, I've always loved seeing Jenny Corona kick butt because it's extremely believable, but it's just, it, it felt so forced in this one. And I just didn't like the, the, the unbelievability whenever it came to all the blaster fire. Even stormtroopers that can't hit the broad side of a barn would have been able to hit them plenty of times the dark troopers didn't seem nearly as intimidating as what we were kind of led to believe they are incredibly strong but they're so like robotic that it just it makes it pretty easy to be able to figure out a way to outsmart them even though you cannot compare their strength you know they're basically immune immune to blaster fire they still their their weapons can't go they can barely punch uh through beskar they can barely affect anyone who is in pure beskar like one of the stormtroopers hits the mandalorian like 10 times square in the head and doesn't hardly phase him almost at all it does more pressure than it does actual denting of the armor and yet these these same dark troopers are able to punch their way through blast doors after a certain amount of time and the same amount of punches cannot pierce the pure beskar like you would still receive incredible brain damage from these punches even if you're protected fully by the Baskar from the direct blows just the shock and the impact like but again uh, but then they ended up getting easy, so easily handled by Luke and it was so cool like I said before to see him actually kicking butt in with his force and lightsaber ways and everything but let me tell y'all something guys 
This is one of the reasons I, I hate this episode. And when you see this episode, you're going to see it for yourself. Like, you're going to see it. They put him in CGI. It's not the original Mark Hamill. They make an entire Luke Skywalker out of CGI. And I can't stand it. It looks so unreal. Out of all the huge budgets that The Mandalorian and Disney can provide, Disney Plus, they couldn't do any better than this. Wow. I've seen better CGI's in much lower budgeted movies. And the way that they do Luke Skywalker CGI is absolutely atrocious the graphics are not even all set up right so it seems blotchy in some areas it doesn't even look like you know they really went all the way through and putting it as a human like it is just so bad guys like really guys when you go and see this it's so bad it's so bad it's so 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 bad for us finally being able to see luke skywalker who is able to find them and basically save them at the last possible moment in his X-Wing. It, and uh, Moff Gideon's trying to stab them in the back and everything. There's a little fight between uh, the Mandalorian and the Moff Gideon. He's a pretty good combat artist. But once again, the when we find out that the Darksaber is supposed to be able to cut through anything except your pure Baskar. And he hits him a bunch of times. And with that dark saber, it's not really doing anything to the Mandalorian because, once again, it's pure Baskar that he's armored with. So it just kind of takes away from the tension. It's like, well, you couldn't be beat even if you, even if you tried. But uh, they find he, Grogu uh, actually has been had the blood taken from him for the experiments. We don't know if it's going directly to the Emperor or how it's going to bring peace to the galaxy, like Moff Gideon says, but he's already been experimented on. They had the blood samples, so now it's just a rescue mission. Even though they weren't able to prevent him and prevent them from getting the blood samples through the help of the scientists, uh, at least they're able to save Grogu. And Luke Skywalker comes in and save the day, and he's the one who responds to that light force beacon right there that was in the previous episode. And... Yeah, he was able to find Grogu with that, and yeah, it's just, now he's now he's taking Grogu, and Grogu insisted on having the Mandalorian's blessing and attention, and here's another thing too, it's just so, like, I understand it's part of the character development whenever it comes to, you know, the Mandalorian realizing that the rigid ways of the old cult that he's in is not exactly always the right way, but it still feels so out of character. He takes his mask off, just to be able to say bye to Grogu one last time face to face and kind of bond with each other right there. And it just doesn't seem in character. I understand the climactic moment, but it just doesn't seem in character. To see, It feels so forced. And we all know that despite his denial of it, he was griping and complaining about his face time within the Mandalorian. And this is how they're trying to appease him with the finale episode right here in the previous episode, giving all, all sorts of ridiculous reasons to put to take his mask off. Like, they're making it very clear that they're all liars, and we all know that he, you know, just how horrible he was. Like, he's a good actor, but just what a horrible person he is in real life is just absolutely atrocious, and it's being more exemplified indirectly through this episode about wanting to take off the mask. It completely defeats the purpose and the character, and I just, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. The action... It was cool to see Luke Skywalker handle his business with his Force abilities and everything like that. I liked, like I said before, the Bubba Fett and the Black Girl Mandalorian. But the rest of the combat, the blasters and stormtroopers, was even worse than all the unbelievabilities that we see in previous Star Wars movies. And, like, Luke Skywalker CGI, like I said before. And, like, I mean, it's an interesting cliffhanger, but where do we go from here? It's already been confirmed for a season three. So where are we going to be going from here? I have no idea. And like, man, I know a lot of people are going to be excited about this. And I love it too. Believe me, I've loved the last Mandalorian episodes especially. But and with Ahsoka Tano, I can't wait to see what happens with her. But I, I really didn't like this one, guys. The CGI and everything especially just took me all out of it. But there were some good things about this. And I'm definitely hyped to continue this storyline and we'll see what happens in Season 3. Hopefully, we'll have a release date as soon as possible. Let me know what y'all think about this review in the comments. And if you have any specific questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. 
probably in the morning, but I'll still be answering them. So hopefully y'all will smash that thumbs up, like button. Like I said before, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications like the all future. Follow me on all my social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Links for that being in the description. And the first comment, I bring out y'all out this breaking news always the fastest. So I can't wait to see what y'all's feedback is. And just let and when you come back, when you see the episode, come back in these comments and interact with me and let me know if you agree, disagree. Maybe I'm just tripping or something like that. We can have a nice, calm, reasonable discussion even if we disagree. So I can't wait to see what y'all have to say about that too. So I will see y'all around the way. Peace out, my friends. Y'all have a wonderful rest of the evening.